Saudi Arabia's national team runs beneath the radar. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is chairing the controversial £300 million takeover deal. Quite a contrast to the country's international sports profile. In the last three years, Formula One, boxing, tennis and WWE have all headlined by the Red Sea at a cost of $1.5 billion. Thirteen months ago, the Kingdom's public investment fund bought Newcastle United. The Crown Prince wants to change the vision of Saudi Arabia internationally. He wants to build a new kind of state. And sport is a very good way of building connections, of creating a, a, a positive brand image. You can buy into ready-made communities of supporters and fans, and you start to gain their loyalty and affection. Finally, they say they have their club back. But at what cost? The ones who think that it's not about politics, I think that it will backfire on them. It will backfire on the UK as well, if they don't stop a dictator from investing and having so much power in their country. This is my sister, Lujain. In 2018, Lujain al Hatnoul successfully led a campaign to lift the ban on a woman's right to drive in Saudi Arabia. A tribunal later found her guilty of crimes against the state, which she denies. She spent a uh, thousand and one nights in prison. She was uh, electrocuted, uh, waterboarded, um, flogged, beaten, sexually harassed. Of course they deny it, and it's so easy for them to do so because no one can get any evidence of anything. The Saudi government declined to comment and we've been unable to speak to Lujain in Saudi Arabia. Amnesty UK have described Saudi's human rights record as appalling. The killing of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi four years ago at the Saudi embassy in Istanbul provoked international outrage. There continues to be protest over the Saudi state's involvement at Newcastle United. His family called the Newcastle takeover heartbreaking. When they think about Saudi Arabia, they didn't want people to think about Khashoggi. They didn't want people to think about women being tortured. And this is the important part, is that it covers up a crisis. It's not about human rights anymore, it's about sports. And this is the dangerous thing about it. Newcastle for Saudi Arabia was a very attractive prospect because this was a club that had been starved of resources. I don't think Saudi Arabia bought Newcastle in order to distract from its human rights abuses. I think it bought Newcastle in order to broaden out our perception of it. With public comment rare, the spotlight has fallen on those they've teamed up with. Yesterday in Saudi Arabia, 81 people were executed in the largest mass execution in years. What do you think of that as a fact that they are bankrolling your football team? I'm just going to answer questions on the game and on football. I'm still bitterly disappointed from the defeat, so I think that's it's only right that I, I stick to football. Federations and promoters say their partnerships can be agents for on-the-ground progress through long-term relationships that may bring change. There are lots of concerns that people have, and I also think it's important people realise there's a huge change programme going on, a social revolution going on in Saudi that doesn't diminish any of the, the things that should never have happened. Qatar has spent more than $220 billion on the World Cup. With it has come intense scrutiny. I think Qatar wanted the world's attention on it, and it's got that. It's just that it has not been the unparalleled positive attention that it was hoping for. No one was talking about these issues before the World Cup, so I think it's a good thing, actually. It's the other side of it. It's shedding light on violations. I think for what we Europeans have been doing in the last 3,000 years around the world, we should be apologizing for the next 3,000 years. It's just hypocrisy. This year, Saudi Arabia doubled down with Live Golf, an alternative tour for the world's best players. Maybe the last time somebody was willing to invest $2 billion into the game of golf. Perhaps the future for football ownership. Replace the traditional model, own the sport. What we've seen with Live Golf, to actually try to make a play for the entire sport, that is a big development, and I think there will be a lot of eyes from 
you know, across the Gulf on how that works. A European Super League owned and run by a Gulf state? I think the lesson we've learned from the last couple of decades is that you should never count anything out when it comes to football and money. Where is your sister today? She is in Saudi Arabia, she's on a travel ban, and uh, she's not allowed to, to, to leave the country now. Everyone should be involved in this and be critical about it. Your words count, and you can bring so much change without you knowing. Really, speak up for us.